Look at that. Shoulders are transformed correctly. I swear, some people. <laughs> What's going on everybody, SLB coming at you with another video review. This time we're taking a look at Fans Toys FT-30A Maverick, or as some people may know him, as Silverbolt. Quick housekeeping to take care of first and foremost on my last video, Spencer and Locke. Thank you to everybody that viewed it. Special shout out to Jorge Santiago Jr. who actually commented on my Instagram post about the review that made me fangirl out, I'm not gonna lie. And David Paposi, thank you again for you know liking it, sharing it, all that stuff. I really appreciate the fact that you guys liked it. I really did, that's probably one of my favorite videos I've done recently, so thank you guys very much. One more thing to take care of, I had a comment from Nick Lord in New Zealand. Nick, for some reason, I can't view the comment. If you can please repost it on that review or this review or whichever review you feel is necessary i would greatly appreciate it and thanks for subscribing nick lord from new zealand so let's get into the package for fans toys maverick here on the front of the package you just have maverick looking all stoic and brave jumping up in the air because he doesn't fly because he's scared of heights but there you just have the front of the packaging nice artwork on the front there on this side just says maverick on this side just says Maverick. On the top of the packaging, Maverick FT30A. Here's another artwork of the plane mode. On the bottom of the packaging, same thing, Maverick, da 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 da. There you go. On the back of the packaging, you just have your product shots. He does this, that, everything else. A little bit of bio up there on the top. Feel free to read it if you want. Pause. I'll give you a second. All right, you're done. That is it for the packaging. Let's get him out of there and see what he looks like in hand. So here we have Fans Toys Maverick out of the packaging. Before we get into the figure, let's go over what's included in said packaging. First thing that you get is your obligatory collector card, which I, you know, if you know me, you know how much I love collector cards. Just a uh, CGI rendering on the front there. Fans Toys Maverick, all that. Good stuff on the back, product shots, robot mode, alt mode, that brief bio again, plus tech specs. So there you have that. Nice thick card stock. I love me, my collector cards. Thank you, Fansoys, for providing these. So that's it for the collector card. Also included in the packaging is your obligatory instruction sheet here, which the instructions suck. Oh my god, I was guessing through half of this thing. This goes here, this goes here. And it doesn't help the fact that, you know, he t the instructions tell you to go from robot to plane mode. But it's mistransformed once you get it out of the packaging, which I'll get into when I get into final thoughts. But again, it's just from uh, robot to plane mode, no combined mode transformation instructions here. So there you have that for the instructions. Also included in the packaging, you do get his weapon here, which is done in a very nice plastic with a little bit of sparkle to it. Looks very good. I dig it. I have not found any place to store this in vehicle mode. If anybody can come across it or they figure it out, let me know. Hit me up in the comment section down below of where to store it. But nonetheless, here it is. It looks very good. Very reminiscent of G1 toy. It's very good. Very nice. I'll go more into this one again to robot mode but yeah looks really good also included in the packaging you do get an alternate head here with a screaming face and an alternate faceplate with what looks like a chin strap but it's that gorgeous pearl white like it is in vehicle mode and we'll show that off again when we go into robot mode those blue eyes piercing into your soul looks gorgeous love that sky blue looks very good i dig it i love it uh to replace the faceplate, all you gotta do is unscrew these three screws back here Pop this off and replace it like that. I'm not going to show it off because I'm just not a big fan of the screaming face or this face. I like the standard face that comes with it. But there you have that. So moving right along, let's talk about this figure here. Right out of the gate, right when you get him into plane mode, which will take you forever. I'll get more into that when I get into my final thoughts. But once you get into plane mode, it is beautiful, breathtaking. That pearl white plastic gorgeous 
sparkle, shines, just makes you feel happy and bright. But let's get in close on this figure here. The front's got this nice clear yellow plastic up here. Beautiful black oh, at the tip right here. Looks very good. I'll just get this out of the way right now. There, it can do that. You know, they have pills that can help you fix that. Anyway, moving on. Gorgeous white pearl all throughout. Nice yellow paint spotches right here for the windows. Looks very good all throughout. Very nice. Got some nice black back here for the thrusters. A little bit of molded detail there. Looks very good. Very good indeed. Same on the other side here. This pearl white is just breathtaking. But yeah, looks very good. Very, very good. He does have wheels on the bottom here. They are plastic wheels, but they're on die cast uh, landing gear, I guess you want to call it. But they do roll, and he does roll. Like that. Look at that roll. Look at that plane roll on the ground. Yippee for that. So there you have that. The landing gear does fold up also. These just fold up like so. The front landing gear folds in like that, and that panel covers it up. And there you have it like that. Uh, quick nitpick. There's no spot underneath here to plug in a flight stand. Yeah, that's better. Um, I tried using this hole with the Fans Toys uh, Soar, their version of Swoop. The hole's too small, or the peg's too big. Am I right? Anyway, moving on from that. Uh, but there's really no spot underneath here to peg him into a flight stand. And that's kind of a bummer, but at the same time, he's very, like, all of the weight is back here. So it's kind of, like, I don't know, with this thing on a flight stand, I would be very cautious with doing that. Just because, unless you have him, like, an upward flying motion like that, or downwardly, you find, like, the zero point, you know, the... I don't know where the balancing point would be on this guy. So, there you have that. Let's just get the landing gear back out. There is a little thing on here to catch the uh, landing gear. So you can bring it out. But I have no nails. So, I'll use a little screwdriver here. Because I lost Mr. Pointer Spudger. And that's just sad. There we go. Yeah, I don't know where Mr. Poison Spudger went, so I'm just going to be using the screwdriver until I can get another one. Let's kind of go into the elephant in the room. You see me messing with it a couple times here. These little tabs here, there's a hole right here, and it feels like something should tab in, but there's really nothing there to tab. This one's kind of a bit of a flop. This one's a floppy mess. I mean, this thing just barely stays in there. I mean, just... I mean, like I said earlier, they've got pills that can fix that, you know. It's kind of a bit of annoyance there, those little red tabs. But yeah, other than that, I mean, this guy looks stunning in plane mode. Very streamlined underneath. It's not very, uh, you can kind of make out the robot thighs here, but it cleans up very well. It just looks very good, nice and compact in there. And it's not just, you know, a robot pressed underneath doing a yoga pose. I mean, you can tell, like, no, these are the arms or everything like that, but it's very clean, very flat also. It's not very bulky in the bottom here, so it looks very, very good. I like that. All right, let's just push him over here. Let's get into some comparison, shall we? Here he is next to Transformers Combiner Wars Silverbolt. Here we have him next to Zeta Toy Silver Arrow, or their version of Silverbolt. And here we have him next to the only G1 aerial bot I have. I know, it's a little sad. But here he is next to Transformers G1 Air Raid. One more thing I want to throw in this review before we get into robot mode is just the overall length of him. So let's get him back. This dude clocks in at about 18 and a half to 18 and three quarter inches long. Whew, that's a big boy. This thing is long. So there you have that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for vehicle mode. Let's get him into robot mode and see what robot mode looks like. So here we have Maverick in his robot mode, and his robot mode is just beautiful. It's gorgeous. We'll get into that when we get into some final thoughts. But let's get in on that head sculpt. Let's bring him in a little bit closer here. How's that? Is that good? 
that's good. Let's get on that face there. And that face sculpt is beautiful. The actual faceplate has a little bit of more shine than the actual uh, helmet here, which looks really good. I mean, it really makes that face stand out a little better. And those blue eyes kind of just, you get lost in them, makes you drift away. Now I'm picturing myself on a beach drinking a beer. Mm, sorry about that. Got sidetracked for a second there. But continuing on, the uh, face sculpt, again, very gorgeous. Nice shine to it. This chest area, you hear that? That's die cast metal right there. That is metal. Metal. Oh, that's awesome. He's got some serious heft to him. Serious heft. Oh, just about as much as Road King. But I digress. I'm, I'm ADD is kicking in, so let's focus on the figure here. Got some nice clear plastic bits in the chestal area here. Very nicely done. This pearl white all throughout. Mwah. Magnifique. Beautiful. Looks just as good in robot mode as it did in vehicle mode. Going down, you got some nice of that mustardy yellow right here in the uh, ab section, as well as in the sh arms right here. And I like the contrast of the black behind this white wing here. I think that looks really good and kind of makes them pop a little bit more. Turning them on the side here, you got some nice silver paint on the forearms right here. It looks very good. Very nice indeed. Coming down here to the groinal area. Got some more silver paint right here. Looks very good. Lifting them up. Got some red paint in the upper thighs here. Looks very good. Got that same uh, mustardy yellow. Almost got a gold tint to it. Right here in the thigh area. Going down to the knees. Got some clear yellow plastic here with some nice molded detail behind it. Looks very good. The feet, the shins look very good. Nice pearl white looks very good right here i guess what you consider the bottom of the shin or the ankle or i don't know is there a doctor in the house to help me tell me what section this is of the leg that'd be great got some nice molded detail inside there with some nice silver paint almost looks like a filter like an air filter you use for your house looks very good and the feet nice plastic plastic feet these part right here this part's plastic. This part, again, plastic. Interesting. But all this right here, this is all die cast. So there you go. That looks really good. And again, going out to the side here, I got a little bit more silver paint there. Going to the back of the figure. Cleans up very well. Everything's nice and compact. He's got a little bit of a backpack, but it's not protruding out to the point of he's got balance issues, which I like. He's got a lot of die cast in him, weighing him down, which is good. And his center of gravity is really well done in robot mode. I like that. Very nice indeed. So going over the articulation, I'll bring him closer in again. The head is on a hinge. You can look down only that far. You can only look up about that far, which is kind of a bummer. It doesn't matter which helmet you have. It's going to happen on either one, unfortunately. They're molded the same. It doesn't matter. If you're feeling brave enough, you can file some plastic down, but that's all you're going to get. So up, down, again, mushroom peg. You can only go forward this far, which is kind of a bummer. Look at that. Arms can do a full 360 on a very nice, tight ratchet joint. Mm. Mm. Can go out only that far, but if you kind of mistransform him, you can use this. Again, it looks ugly but you can use that for articulation so you can actually have his arm go up all that far or you can have him go out there like that. This whole thing is die cast too. So let's just transform that correctly. There we go. Uh, swivel at the bicep here, 90 degree bent, a little under 90 degrees right there. Almost gets you it, not completely. Let's stretch it out with an outstretched arm. Wrist is on a swivel. Tight swivel, can do a full 360, and it is fans toys, so let's grab Mr. Screwdriver here and let you take a look at these articulated fingers. There's a ball joint here for the thumb, a hinge here, so you can up and down that or swivel. Again, 
Hinge, Hinge, it's fans toys. You know how they roll with their hands. Their hands are awesome. I'm not gonna give him any slack for that. So let's just bring his arm down. Um, unfortunately, with this guy, little to no waist articulation whatsoever. You can only get that much. And it's not really due to the, let's get the arms up here. It's kind of due to the backpack. It's also due to this part right here. It's it's just, there's not much going on and you're scraping the die cast part here with the plastic right here. So be very mindful of that. But yeah, just be mindful of that. Legs can only go, you can move the hip skirt so the legs can go forward. If you're kind of worried about this thing scraping up against this, you can fold it in like that. So there you can get that far that way. Can go back. Well, if you get that out of the way, that far like that. And you can get the full right there, which is very nice. Swivel right there at the hip. Nice tight 90 degree bend at the knee. Very good, very nice. Feet, kind of a bummer. You don't get a lot of articulation out of the feet. You can only bend it, pivot it that far. If you keep this part down, you can only get that far forward, that far back. But if you actually move this panel up, like, like so, you can actually get more articulation. So completely up to you. You can take his weapon here, and let's just give it in this hand. And like all fans' toys, slot, groove, thing right here. Nice tight fit. Let's scoot him over this way a little bit. Nice tight fit. Wrap the fingers around as best you can. Wrap the thumb. And there you have him holding his gun so he can shoot you. Bang, bang. Nice tight grip, not gonna lose that thing. That thing ain't coming out anytime soon. Really cool, really dig that. And let's move him right here. And let's bring him a little bit closer because that's kind of bright. A little bit over here, turn him a little bit. Let's just move the light then. Jesus, that's bright. <laughs> you don't realize how bright the lights are until you put them against a white figure. All right, now that we got the lights all situated, let's get onto the comparisons. Here he is next to Transformers Combiner Wars Silverbolt. Here he is next to Zeta Toys Silver Arrow, their version of Silverbolt. Here he is next to Fans Toys Road King, or their version of Motormaster. Here we have him next to some official Takara Masterpiece Transformers. Here we have him next to Optimus Prime, Sunstreaker, and Bumblebee version 1. And here we have him next to the only G1 aerial bot I have. Here he is next to Transformers Generation 1 Air Raid. So there we have it for the comparisons. Let's get into a final pose and get into some final thoughts. So for my final thoughts for Fans Toys Maverick, their version of Silverbolt, I think he's awesome looking. He looks great. The color on this guy is beautiful. The pearl white looks stunning. Nice shine. The red in the chest. You know, that die cast metal, that red, looks stunning. When I was transforming it, I did notice a little bit of paint chipping. There's a lot of die cast rubbing up on die cast, rubbing up on plastic, so just be mindful of that. You may come across some paint chipping issues of your own. Speaking of transformation, that transformation is a pain in the ass. Once you get the hang of it, once you get the feel of it, like two or three times, it's gonna be a breeze. You're gonna be able to do a blindfold that first time, right when you take them out of the packaging, it's gonna be a nightmare. You're gonna get overly frustrated. I guarantee it. There is a section in the instructions where they literally tell you, force down as picture shows. You shouldn't have to force down anything when you're transforming something. Everything should be smooth and cohesive. And the fact that you actually have to put force for the transformation kind of problematic. A little force is fine, but when I was doing that section, I was really squishing it together and really forcing it in there. And you know what? I finally forced it in and it stayed in and I sneezed, quotes, air quotes, you know, I sneezed and the thing came unpacked. And I'm like, oh, come on. 
And then when you're trying to transform the rest of it, you're trying to plug in certain parts down the bottom of vehicle mode. You think you get everything just right and that little bar pops out and it's kind of an annoyance. But when you do get them into plain mode, the plain mode looks beautiful. Those little red tabs on the sides, I mean, it's when you're moving them around, they're gonna be a floppy mess. But once you get them in plain mode, they kind of stay in there pretty well. But going back to the robot mode, the lack of articulation is, it's, it's a letdown. You know, he's got good articulation in the arms and the knees, but it's that lack of head rotation, waist swivel, feet articulation. Eh, it's just really bugging me about this figure. I mean, Road King had limited articulation too, but he had a full 360 rotation in the head. Yeah, he couldn't look up and down as much, but he could do the full 360. He had a little bit more movement in the waist. And for the feet on Road King, there was more articulation than that there is on this. Granted, it wasn't much, but it was still more than this. And you gotta think there's a bunch of car kibble in those feet in Road King. There's not that much kibble in the feet for Silverbolt Maverick here. Lastly, if you're looking to not break the bank and want a good rendition of Silverbolt, go with Zeta. The colors aren't as uh, shiny and crisp as fan toys here, but you're essentially getting the same figure here for cheaper. And don't get me wrong, I love Zeta. Zeta Toy Superion is beautiful. Their aerial bots are great. I'm going to keep Superion, the Zeta Toy Superion in combined mode. That's going to be my Superion figure, is them right there. For robot mode, I'm going with fans' toys. It all depends on your taste. I like them both. I like the pearl white on fans' toys Maverick more so than the, how do I call it? What do I, what's the best? Money shot white. It's a thing. Know what that means? Shame on you. It was on a guitar. If you want a more, you know, subtle, less shine white, then go with Zeta. But again, like I said, fans' toys going to be in robot mode. Zeta going to be in combined mode. Would I recommend this figure? Yes. He looks great. He's beefier. He's got more of a chest. He's got what's it? He's got more of a bodybuilder look to him than. Zeta. I'm well, not really bodybuilder, but he's got like more girth to him in the chest area, the midsection, you know, the legs. It's got more girth than Zeta, which is kind of lanky and kind of skinny. So again, it depends on what your taste is. But again, would I recommend Fans Toys Maverick? Of course. He looks great. So that'll about do it for my review of Fans Toys Maverick. Hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave a comment in the comment section down below there. Hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Links to everything will be in the description down below. This is SLB and this has been my review of Fans Toys FT-30A Maverick. And this is SLB saying, my childhood hates me.